Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini PC that should offer some really good performance. This is known as the ASRock Nuckbox 1260P. I'm actually super excited to test this out. I've been waiting a little while to get my hands on it. And what makes this little PC special is it's powered by an Intel Alder Lake 12 core CPU. And last year we took a look at their 11th gen version of this. It was the Nuckbox 11 but this should offer a significant jump in performance. And they do offer a couple different models. They've got the Alder Lake i3, i5, and the one we're taking a look at in this video is the i7 model powered by the Intel Alder Lake 1260P. We've got 12 cores and 16 threads. I've actually tested this CPU before in a handheld and it does offer some really amazing performance. And as you can see, this thing is tiny. I mean, these little ASRock industrial PCs come in really small. And inside of the box, we're not going to get much more than the mini PC itself and a 90 watt power supply. So yeah, when it comes down to it, the design of the whole unit itself hasn't changed much from the 11th gen. It's really the internals that have changed. So we've got our power button on the top. Up front, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a full size USB 3.2 port, and two Thunderbolt ports. Now they're not Thunderbolt 4 certified, but they are Thunderbolt 4 ports. They just haven't been certified yet. I've tested it and the eGPU does work on this unit. On both sides, there's not much going on, but we do have some ventilation. But around back, we've got our power input for that 90 watt power supply, two more full size USB 3.2 ports, full size HDMI, full size display port, gigabit Ethernet, and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. 99% of the time, when you find these, they will be a bare bones kit. You'll have to add your own storage and RAM, but they do come with Wi Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. For the CPU, we've got the Intel i7-1260P, 12 cores, 16 threads, 4 performance cores up to 4.7 GHz, and 8 efficiency cores up to 3.4. Built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units and a max clock up to 1400 MHz. It will support up to 64 GB of DDR4 SODIMM RAM running at 3200 MHz. It also supports one M.2 SSD, and there's enough room in here for a single 2.5-inch SSD. And real quick, I'll give you a look at the internals. The bottom pops right off with four screws. We can mount a 2.5 inch drive here. Comes with the mounting hardware and the cable taped into the unit itself. Very easy to get to that RAM and M.2 SSD. I've just added a little heat sink to a one terabyte drive. And originally I was gonna go with 32 gigabytes of RAM, but I did swap it out for 16. It's basically the same stuff. It's crucial running at 3200 megahertz. All right, so before I plug this into my game capture, I wanted to give you a quick look here. As you can see, uh, this thing is definitely tiny. This is a 25 inch monitor, by the way. We've got that i7-1260P and Intel Iris Xe graphics. Everything's been working really well so far. I've got a lot of stuff installed that we're gonna be testing out. But before we take a closer look, I wanted to run one game here. We're gonna go with Forza Horizon 5. I completely understand that it's a very well optimized game. It's actually one of my favorites right now. But I wanted to show you how it performed on this real quick. Okay, so straight off the bat, we're at 1080p low settings with this. And you know, with integrated graphics, it's really great to turn on VSync and maybe drop this down to 900p. But this little setup will run it at 1080p, low settings, locked at 60. We can actually average 72 FPS out of it like it is right now. And this little system is pulling around 30 to 35 watts at 1080p. But I also tested this at 720. And to tell you the truth, I thought we'd get a little more out of it, you know, when compared to 1080. So here it is at 720 low, and we get an average of 84 FPS. Remember, at 1080 low, we get an average of 72. I figured we'd be in the 90s here, and I'm sure we could with some resolution scale. But either way you look at it, this game is actually running really well on this mini PC. Alright, so here we are. Got a bunch of stuff installed that we're going to be testing out, but first thing I wanted to take a look at was the TDP on this CPU. So we've got the 1260p here. It's a 28 watt part, but uh, if I go to bench here, this actually has a boost up to 45 watts in this thing, and it can get a bit hot. We can actually adjust this using Intel tuning utility, and I think around 35 watts might be the sweet spot to keep it nice and cool with the cooling system that's in this mini PC. But it's nice to know that we can actually control that. And since we're using that 1260p with the Intel Iris Xe graphics, we do have the new ARC control panel. So we can get automatic updates here, it'll list our games. There's not a ton of settings right now for it. I mean, we can actually disable, you know, VSync and stuff just like Intel control panel did. 
but hopefully in the future we do get a few more options inside of this. Still, it does look a lot better than the older control panel. So using this as a PC, I mean, it's going to work out just fine. Plenty of power from that 1260p. Head over here to ASRock's website. So as you can see, they do have the boxes, and in the future, I think we're going to see the boards. Oh, here it is. Just the board itself. So you can get the motherboard in that 1260p. But overall, yeah, I mean, this thing is really, really fast. And, you know, for 4K video playback and things like that, you're not going to have any issues whatsoever. This has more than enough power, especially at 28 watts. But since we have that boost and kind of a controllable boost, you can basically set this down to around 15 watts. It'll stay super quiet, nice and cool, and you can use it as your everyday PC at 15 watts, no problem at all. But for this video here, we've got a base TDP of 28 watts and a boost up to 45. I've just left it like that. While gaming, I really haven't seen it go up into the 45 watt range. And the cooling system in this Nook box does handle it quite well while gaming. There were a few applications that I threw at it, which basically just max it out at 45 watts, like RPCS3. So when you see that testing there, I'm actually going to take it down to 35. But the very first thing I did here was run some benchmarks, and it's looking really impressive. When it comes to Geekbench 5, these Alder Lake CPUs do a great job. Single core, 1644, multi, 10,608. Remember, we're running this in high performance mode with that 45 watt boost. But for being such a small form factor PC, these are some really great scores here. I also ran 3D Mark Fire Strike. We got a 5,507. And finally, Time Spy with a 2,017. Not bad at all for integrated graphics, and especially the fact that these are Intel integrated graphics. Now it's time to check out some more PC gaming, and first up we've got Control. We're at 1080p with a scale down to 720, low settings. This is running really well. We got an average of 68 FPS out of it. This is one of those games you can go ahead and turn VSync on and just play right through it. It would run at a constant 60. When it comes to Elden Ring, it did much better than I thought it would, where at 720p low, we got an average of 56 FPS out of this. Uh, it's really, really close to being a constant 60, and you'll see it fluctuate between. In sparsely populated areas, which I know are kind of few and far in between, it will run at 60, but it still looks great like this, and I think it's fully playable. God of War didn't do as well as I was hoping. We only averaged 43 FPS out of this, and you'll see a dip under 40 every once in a while. It really comes down to the Intel graphics drivers. They definitely need to work on those, but you know, if you wanted to run this at 720p low at 30, you could definitely do it. It handles Genshin Impact really well. We're at 1080p with a low medium mix, and we got a constant 60 out of this. I only saw it dip down to 58 one time when there was a lot of particles on screen, but overall we're seeing some really great performance with Genshin Impact on this PC. When it comes to Cyberpunk 2077, it's really close. We actually only got an average of 58 FPS out of this. We're at 720p with the Steam Deck preset, and obviously FSR isn't going to work with this, so I completely disabled it. But I was actually expecting a little less out of it, given that we have an Intel iGPU. Not bad at all. So this little setup did decently with PC gaming, but where these little Alder Lake chips shine is emulation. Here we have some PS2 at 1080p, I'm using PC SX2, Ratchet and Clank running at full speed. We're on the balance preset, and as long as the game you want to play is compatible with the PC SX2 emulator, you'll be able to run it at 720p up to 1080. Another one I wanted to throw in here was some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. This is upscaled to 720p DOA3, and as you can see, it's running at a constant 60. We're only pulling around 32 watts at max with this setup. Okay, oh. 
And the final thing I wanted to test here was some PS3 emulation using RPCS3. We're at the stock resolution, which I believe is 720p, Vulcan back in, and the 1260p can handle this emulator. When it comes to testing total system power consumption, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter, and at idle, it averages 11 watts. Average gaming, 48 watts, and the maximum that I could get this to pull was 71 watts from the wall, and that's totally maxed out. That's an extreme use case scenario. Checking out CPU temps, it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be, given how small this is and what kind of wattage this 1260p can pull. At idle, it's around 39 degrees Celsius. Average gaming, 77, and that's through all of my emulation and gaming testing in this video. I just took the main average here. And yeah, I was able to get this to hit thermal throttle at 94 degrees Celsius while running Cinebench for 10 minutes straight. And I figured it would, you know, running at 45 watts in this small form factor unit. But under everyday normal use and even gaming, I didn't see any kind of thermal throttling with this unit. Overall, really digging the CPU performance of the Nookbox 1260p. The GPU does leave a little more to be desired, but we're still working with DDR4 RAM only running at 3200 MHz. If we could get one of these with DDR5, it would up that performance by a little bit. But unfortunately, a lot of these Alder Lake mini PCs come to the market are still stuck on DDR4, and it really comes down to availability. But I really do love the performance this little thing's putting out. And one thing I'd really love to test on this is Linux, so if you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave a couple links in the description. Like we saw, you can actually buy the board itself, and I might end up doing that later on down the road, maybe with the i3 version, just to put it in a little project. But until then, that's it for this video. It'd be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on if you're interested in videos like this. But like always, thanks for watching.